Professor Jim Ring talked to Grant Richmond, recorded in November 1980. The first question is, how does a professor from the Physics Department of Imperial College become involved with the Independent Broadcasting Authority? Well, it's a long story which I'll try and tell briefly. When I was at Manchester um, as a young lecturer, there used to be a programme on every evening, still is. It, it was then called People and Places, a sort of magazine-type programme. And that was in the late 1950s, and space was becoming the OK word, and Granada Television wanted somebody to go and spend perhaps two or three minutes every time there was a space shot, and they asked me would I do it. I remember the famous occasion, too, when they phoned me up and said, um, we, we had planned to have a snake charmer on the programme, but his snakes got a cold. Can you do three minutes instead on Copernicus? <laughs> Actually, they pronounced it Copernicus. And I had to hastily grab a book from the library, take a taxi to Granada, and do my three minutes on Copernicus. Well, that led to my um, presenting a series of programmes called First Steps in Physics, which were an attempt to bring lay people up to O-level physics with correspondence courses and so on. And then I did some more programmes for a London company called Exploring Mind. And as a result of that, of course, I was interested in the impact of television on education and on science. And I've always been tried to increase the use of television in, in teaching. Um, but uh, the IBA have a thing called the General Advisory Council, and they wanted a scientist who was interested in television to join that. I did join that. After a few years, I was elected its chairman, and then I got to know more about the ITV system. And I suppose as a result of that, the Home Secretary then wanted an engineer, and I suppose he thought a physicist was near enough, who knew something about independent television, and I was appointed to the Independent Broadcasting Authority. Oh, it's smashing. What, what sort of work are you involved in in the college, though, in the Blackett Lab? Well, in the college, I'm really in the physics department, as you know, but our interest has always been the development of better instruments and better techniques for use in astronomy and indeed the astronomy that you can do with these better instruments and techniques. Quite apart from space astronomy, ground-based astronomy has become much more sophisticated in the last decade or so, with very complicated instruments and light detectors, with computers being used to process data. So it's very appropriate to a physics department these days that we have a research group and we concentrate, as I say, on new techniques of observation, both at visible and infrared wavelengths, both from the ground and from space, and try to improve the methods of observation, and when we've got improved methods, try to learn more about the universe as a result of using them. Yeah, do you have to do a lot of travelling for that? Well, I wish I could. Uh, I used to, and my staff in the group and students spend as much as two or three months a year at observatories abroad in places like Tenerife and Hawaii. All sounds very exotic, but if you remember, you're up at 8,000 feet or 14,000 feet in those two places and are often cut off by snow. It's not quite so nice as it seems. Well, uh, in recent years, my sort of administrative jobs in the college and in the department uh, stop me from getting away as often as I'd like, so perhaps I only get abroad once or twice a year. But that's the delight of being an astronomer, when you can manage it, to go and, uh, on a mountain top, commune with yourself at dead of night and with your computer and, and think deep thoughts about the universe. That's a most unusual life. Uh, coming back to Earth though, what do you have to do in sort of day-to-day -day running of the uh, astronomy group? Well, uh, the, it's mainly administrative, I'm afraid. You know the principle in universities is you find professors who are good at research and perhaps not bad at teaching and then you prevent them from doing either thing from then on by loading them with administration. I mean, basically what I have to do is to organise the finances of the astronomy group. We get a lot of money from the Science Research Council, we get some from the college, organise the spending of that money, um, chat to postgraduate students and, and try and help them uh, get their research going. So a lot of the teaching is informal at postgraduate level, done on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, of course, I do my undergraduate teaching as a member of staff in the department and in the last few years I've taken responsibility for the finances of the physics department, quite apart from one or two jobs on college or university committees, and of course, as you mentioned earlier, the IBA as an outside interest, plus a couple of small science-based companies. So mainly I spend my time doing administration with occasional chances to do research, which I very much welcome. Well, what kind of work then do you do um, in administration in the college itself? 
Well, I, I'm not doing much at the moment, but previously I was chairman of the Educational Technology Committee, which was directly in line with the interest I mentioned earlier about using television in um, education. I've met with a very disappointing response on the part of colleagues about the uses that can be made of television. Quite understandable, it's a new technique. It seems at first sight a lot of effort for not much result, but I happen to believe in it rather fervently. And I chaired that committee for three years or so, and we managed to do something about training teachers in training lecturers in methods of instruction and helped the TV studio a little bit from time to time. Then I was chairman of a joint panel between the college and uh, ASTMS, the Technicians Trade Union, which involved monthly meetings to discuss with the trade union any grievances, any suggestions for improving conditions of work, even to negotiating our way out of a rather long and frustrating strike that we had about a year ago, which took up a lot of time. I see. Also, have you got any plans for the future? I mean, do you think of leaving the college or writing any books, anything like that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to stay at the college because it's a marvellous um, place to be with so much going on and such a, a splendid base from which to do better research. What I hope to do is to gradually get rid of some of these administrative responsibilities. For example, I cease to be a member of the IBA, I think, at the end of next year and have more time to do research, which is what I really enjoy. Um, in the department, uh, I think once we get over the present financial difficulties, I hope that that side of running the physics department will become routine, although whether it ever will, I don't know, and again, give me more time for teaching and research. So n no spectacular plans, except if I can have a hand in um, the distribution of pictures to people's homes by optical fibres, developments of cable television, that I think will give us another splendid chance to have visual education going directly into people's homes and perhaps making up for the gap that exists between the sort of people who go to university and the sort of people who leave school at 16, which is, I think is something as a nation we haven't done nearly enough about. Okay, well changing tack rather, rather abruptly, what do, um, what do your family do, what does your wife do for example? Well, my wife, uh, actually, uh, she would say she's just a housewife. We have two boys, and she looks, uh, she still takes a great deal of interest in what they're up to. One of them has a young daughter, so we have a granddaughter, and uh, she's very interested in the family. She uh, finds a lot to do with friends. She finds charitable things to do, and uh, more than enough, actually, to keep her very busy indeed still, although she doesn't have a job and no apparent professional interest. I think it's like most housewives, frankly. Um, one final question. Do you have any hobbies? What kind of things do you do in your spare time? If there's any left over, of course. Well, I, I read as much as I can. I'm an avid reader. Um, I get through still about four books a week, from fiction to biographies. I sail. I sail a dinghy. It's about the only exercise I get now. And I'd really like to uh, uh, sail around the world in a bigger um, sailing cruiser which I don't suppose I ever will do, but if ever I did retire, that's what I'd want to do first, and perhaps uh, use my astronomy to just navigate my way around the coastlines of the globe. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much.